So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Crystal Urban. I'm the grant program coordinator for the South Dakota Community Foundation. And this afternoon, we'll lead you through an information session very much focused on the Bush Prize. Just a few housekeeping things. We'll keep everyone muted for now. Um, if you have questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to type them into the chat. We will go through questions at the end of the presentation. All the information will be focused on the Bush Prize today, how to apply and its timeline and criteria. And without further ado, I'll pass things off to Ginger Neiman, our senior program officer here at the foundation. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Crystal. And yes, thank you all for coming today. And as Crystal had mentioned, we are going to talk everything Bush Prize today. And super excited to be able to bring the Bush Prize to nonprofits in South Dakota. Um, talk to you just a little bit about the Bush Foundation partnership that we've had with them. So in February um, of this year, the Bush Foundation announced that the Bush Prize would be back. Um, after taking a little bit of a break. Um, the purpose of the Bush Prize will remain the same, which celebrates organizations that are most valued in their communities and have a track record of successful community problem solving. Previously known as the Bush Prize for Community Innovation, the program is now known as the Bush Prize and is done in partnership between the Bush Foundation and the community grant partners. So the Good Relatives Collaborative will be hosting the uh, Bush Prize Native Nations. Headwaters Foundation for Justice will be the Bush Prize of Minnesota. Of course, the South Dakota Community Foundation will be the Bush Prize in South Dakota, and then Strength in ND, Bush Prize in North Dakota. Uh, we want you to know, you know, like I had mentioned that the, the criteria is going to be very similar and we will be announcing the winners all at the same time. And um, each one of us are going to have a little bit different application and selection timelines. And um, we just want to let you know that we are here to support you along the way. It was important for you to know all of these intermediary partners, especially for the nonprofits that um, are by the neighboring borders. And so that's why it's important for you to know who those are and um, what the rules are going forward. So let's talk Bush Prize, South Dakota. So the Bush Prize is an annual award that celebrates organizations that have a culture of innovation and are highly valued within their communities with a track record of successful community problem solving. Although there's not a specific number of years that we're looking at to show what that track record will look like, we will be looking to organizations that may have multiple years of data to establish that track record. We want you to know that the Bush Prize grants are flexible and can be used to build up reserves or test the next big idea or whatever it else would best support the organization's ongoing work. The grant amounts are up to 25% of an organization's most recent fiscal year expenses with a maximum of $500,000. So we will be looking at your last year's fiscal expenses and ask for that information in the application. If you are a finalist, we will work with you to obtain a more detailed financial outlook. You're gonna to want to select the budget that works best for you. Some smaller program budgets may be the best for you, or maybe you're with a larger organization and the entire budget of that entire organization is what you wanna look at. Just rest assured that we will work with you to submit the most accurate budget if you are a finalist. We want the smaller nonprofits to also know that they are encouraged to apply, but it will be capped at 25% of the prior year's budget. 
It might have you looking at other ways to collaborate with other nonprofit organizations that may be a little bit larger than you are, or maybe it's having you look into the future about what might be coming up in the next few years with your organization. We want to talk to you a little bit about multiple winners in one year. It is possible. Um, we will be awarding up to that $500,000 in South Dakota. And we might have one selected or it may be two that are selected until we reach that $500,000 mark. We will know that as we go through the applications and select the finalists. So as I was mentioning before, um, there may be more than one finalist in, in or more than one Bush Prize winner in one year. And what I have listed here are all of the organizations that have received a Bush Prize in the past. What you can do is go out to our website to see a listing of all of these. And if you click on each one of those links here, say you want to learn more about the South Dakota State University Bush Prize that they won, uh, you can click on that link. It will take you to our website and then take you out to the Bush Foundation site. You'll be able to see all the past winners there. And it will also show you grant details and even on many, if not all, a case study of what those Bush Prize winners were doing with, the, with their award. We've had a lot of questions around who is eligible. So let's take a little bit of time to talk about the eligibility. So Bush Prize awards must be used for a charitable purpose. Organizations that are a 501c3 public charities or government entities, including schools, are eligible for the Bush Prize. South Dakota Community Foundation will accept Bush Prize applications from fiscal sponsors. The fiscal sponsor organization must submit the award application. And if the award is approved, becomes the awardee and receives the funds. The South Dakota Community Foundation has offered fiscal sponsorship in the past, but this is not a program or a project related grant. The Bush Prize is an award. So it may look similar, but will be given to the fiscal sponsor. You might wanna reach out for more clarification on this issue if this is something that you're interested in. So Bush Prize winners need to be located in South Dakota or one of the nine native nations that, say, that share the same geography. The specific community innovations highlighted in the Bush Prize application must also have occurred within that geography. So if you are a nonprofit that is close to the Minnesota or North Dakota border, and are working in these nearby states, you would not be eligible. Organizations that have received a Bush Prize in the last 10 years are not eligible to apply. When I look back, the first awards were made in 2014. So that'll be the first time those organizations that received a Bush Prize will be eligible to apply to the Bush Prize. If you were a finalist, but not an awardee, you are still eligible to apply. So now we're gonna shift gears a little bit to the selection criteria and what our reviewers are going to be taking a look at. This criteria was established by the Bush Foundation and we really would like applicants to ask these questions before applying. We wanna know who you are, and what you have been doing. So does the organization have a pattern of innovative solutions? So are these breakthroughs in addressing community needs more effective, equitable, or sustainable than existing approaches? 
Did these innovative solutions make a significant difference in your community? And could the organization inspire or inform others? The next item we want to take a look at in the selection criteria is um, a pattern of using inclusive, collaborative, and resourceful processes because we want to learn more about how you do your work. The Bush Foundation has come up with three different areas of, of what they would like to learn more about. And so the, those three are inclusive. So what does inclusive mean? Meaningfully engaging key stakeholders, thoughtfully identifying those needed to create the intended change, and whenever possible, including those directly affected by the problem. So who have you been working with? We want to know, is this collaborative? A true joint effort with partners willing to share ownership and decision making as they pursue an innovation together. That could look like a lot of ways. So tell us how you do that. When, when we're looking at resourceful, we want to know, are you using existing resources and assets creative, creatively to make the most of what a community already has? How is it resourceful? The last area that we want to take a look at is, does the organization leadership foster a culture of innovation? Tell us about how you see leadership showing up in your daily work. Is the organization stable and strong in terms of governance and finance? That's something that you want to take a good hard look at. And then some additional considerations for a strong application, answer the questions, how does it relate to your work and who you are? Be sure to tell your story. Over time, we will want to seek a portfolio of Bush Prize winners that represents the full diversity of South Dakota and includes a variety of the applicant organization sizes, the community served, both the size and demographics, and types of issues addressed. We also seek representation of community led organizations organizations that are led by people who come from the communities they serve. We will circle back around to whatever questions you have when we get to the end. So I'm gonna just move right forward to the timeline. So the timeline that we have laid out here is uh, the, the, the Bush Prize application window is open now. It opened on May 8th. And it's going to close on May 31st at noon, and that's central time. So I know we have some that are mountain time here. So just make note that it is noon central time on May 31st. As something else that I'd like to um, bring to your attention is that we, this is an online grant application that you're submitting. And once that noon time comes, you will not be able to get in there. So it's not something that we can, can allow somebody to submit an application after that deadline. It, it automatically cuts you off. So just make sure that you get that in before noon. There will be an initial review that the South Dakota Community Foundation will conduct. They'll review applications and select finalists. And we will let you know in July whether your application is moving forward. For the finalist review, we will be conducting site visits and review reference, references in July and August. A panel of community leaders will review and recommend Bush Prize winners from the South Dakota applicant pool. It is important to us that our processes are fair. If any of our selection committee members have a conflict of interest with an organization being considered, for the Bush Prize, they will not be part of any selection discussion or decisions for that year. The foundation defines conflict of interest as being a staff or board member of or having a contractual relationship with an organization. 
We will let finalists know in early October whether they have been selected as a 2023 Bush Prize South Dakota winner. And then all selections that have been made from each one of the states, we will all do a public announcement on the same day. All the selections are based on the program eligibility requirements and criteria. So how do you apply? You're gonna go out to our website and look for the Bush Prize underneath our grants page. There you're gonna see our guidelines, you're gonna see a lot of information, um, the criteria, you'll see the timeline, you'll be able to see all of those Bush Prize winners. And then you'll also be able to see a draft application there that you can print and, and you know, work off of. And when you're ready to apply, then you can go right out to the grant portal that you will um, see a link there on our website to take you to eGrant. And if you're a new user, you'll need to register with the login and password. Uh, existing applicants can move forward with their login and password. And if you're having issues with remembering what that might be, we can help you out with that. Once you're into eGrant, make sure you search for the Bush Prize, which will be located under the opportunities. We ask that you save often and possibly even create your application in another document such as Word, and you can copy and paste it in there. Uh, eGrant will time out if it's left idle for too long. And so it's always great to have a, another backup before you um, move forward. Once you're ready to uh, submit that, you, will, you should receive an email stating that it was successfully submitted. And then it, we also receive that documentation via email. And just a, another reminder, the deadline is May 31st, noon central time. This is what eGrant page looks like in case if you're concerned if you're in the right place or not. Um, it, it should have our logo at the top like this. If you're not in the right eGrant system, it will not have our logo at the top. So I guess that brings us to questions that any of you may have so far. And I'll... Um, ask Crystal maybe to let me know what some of those questions are or have you just come off of mute and ask it yourself, whatever works best. I'll open up the opportunity for um, participants to unmute themselves, but I see one question in the chat, Ginger. Can you talk more about um, the statement of the, the award can be used to build up reserves? Yes, yeah, so... Um, the Bush Prize money is flexible dollars, and if if the innovative work that you have been doing um, is selected as an award, the money that you receive could help for you for your general operating expenses and other expenses that you may have. Is the total funds available 500,000 for all grants? All grants. So um, there, the South Dakota Community Foundation will receive $500,000 for the Bush Prize. It's very possible there will only be one winner for the Bush Prize, but if, if there are more than one finalists that rise to the top or more, there may be more than one Bush Prize winner in a year, but we may only award $500,000 total in the state of South Dakota. Does that answer your question? Yeah, Christina, let us know. Um... If that helps, another question, um, do you feel a statewide organization could be as competitive as a local community-based organization? You know, I think all nonprofits are gonna have the same, you know, 
amount of probability of being a Bush Prize winner. Each application that's submitted, you know, is going to bring forth the innovative work that you've been doing. And that is, it, it's going to be um, really looking at that criteria. And if you're meeting the criteria, that's what's going to be most important. Um, is there a time frame for this funding, meaning is there a deadline by which the funds must be spent? Right. There really isn't a deadline, but um, typically, I think in the past, the Bush Foundation has seen anywhere between like two years and five years at this that this work may be taking place. Do we have a set number of finalists we'll select? No, there is not a set number. Okay, are applicants able to submit a video or photos with their application to help showcase their work? At this particular time, we do not have that capability. Uh, it may be something um, in the future that we would be able to accept. But for the application process, uh, we want it, everybody to be on the same playing field. And so it's just going to be an application. Um, are sub awards allowed to be written into the budget to show community app collaboration for future sustainability? Um, sub awards, um, maybe clarify that. I'm sorry, I guess it looks like I pressed the button to allow people to unmute themselves, so it must not be working. Um, maybe now people can. So to um, clarify the, the sub awards question, yes. um, if a nonprofit is partnering with the school, for example, um, to apply for these funds within the budget, could we write for a sub award? So the school would still be the fiscal sponsor. They would be in charge of managing the funds and working with you guys through the um, approval process. But a chunk of that would be dedicated to the sub awardee nonprofit and both both um, organizations would have the same um, mission. From what I understand, if there is a fiscal sponsor that is going to be putting in the application, they would be the ones being awarded that money and they and then at that point, if they chose to have that written within their budget, that could happen. However, um, if you want to touch base with me after, um, I could dive into that deeper, Jalen. Okay. Thank you, Ginger. A question about fiscal sponsorship. Sponsorship. Um, if the fiscal sponsor is a larger university and that University has received a Bush grant, not necessarily Bush Prize, in the last ten years. Um, is that five hundred one c three still eligible to apply? And my understanding is that 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 eligibility only goes to groups that have won the Bush Prize specifically. Um, and so, if a fiscal sponsor was awarded the Bush Prize in the last 10 years, they would not be eligible, but if they were awarded some other Bush funding, it wouldn't be a mark on their eligibility at all for this program. And just to add to that, the Bush Prize is its own, its own program, its own um, entity. So any awards that you may have received from the South Dakota Community Foundation or the Bush Foundation, um, would be separate from the Bush Prize. Can funds be used for capital projects? You know, um, 
I don't know as if I know the answer to that right now. Um, if you want to check in with me offline, I certainly can dive into that deeper as well. It, just keep in mind the Bush Prize is um, looking at a track record for innovative work. So if if what you're doing is not innovative work and is not um, looking at ways that you have brought your community forward in something that is just regular um, infrastructure or something like that, they, that may not be a very good fit. Yeah, thank you, Ginger, and thank you for the questions in the chat. I haven't seen more come through. I did have the check mark off for having people unmute themselves, but it is available now if you wanted to ask a question. Uh, otherwise, Ginger and I are available via email or phone, and you're sure welcome to reach out to us at any time with questions, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. There's a lot of great information on our website. Um, a lot of what I've talked about today obviously is out there. And um, as Crystal said, we're happy to, you know, connect with you individually um, to find out what it is that, you know, your questions are. We will be offering the Bush Prize this year and the next four years. If there aren't any other questions, I um, can let you go for now, but you have, let's see, I'll throw up our contact information here so that you have that. And we wish you all the best. Thank you all for joining, Melinda.